Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with DayZ. If you enjoy this video, please become a commercial jet pilot and then every flight announce over the loudspeaker that you'll only land the plane if everyone on board subscribes to me, as this would really help spread the good word of my channel. Today I want to tell you the epic story about how two Australians transformed from massive noobs to ever so slightly more capable noobs on their journey to reach the elusive military base. But first we need to go back to the beginning. So I load in and the game asks if I want to see the basic tutorial. Is this game seriously suggesting I'd need a tutorial like I'm pretty sure I know how to crouch and jump, you patronising malakas? I get to create my character and I decide to make her a female. This works well for a couple of reasons. 1. Diversity. I do have a 5-10% to female viewership who might be able to better relate to this protagonist, but more importantly it's because of number 2. If I can somehow get this character in a sexy pose and then use that for the thumbnail, it'll get like 10 times as many views as it appeals to the basic male sexual instinct. It's free real estate. Anyway, I load into the game and the world renders in at an impressive 6 frames per second, welcome to Xbox. It's like PC except less features, worse performance, but no hackers so at least I won't be shot through a wall by a Chinese infant. The items I start with are a plum, it's great to see the developers supporting a healthy balanced diet, a glow stick for a rave I guess, not sure if a zombie infested post-apocalyptic Russia has raves but fingers crossed, and and finally some rags for bandaging wounds. Would have preferred ecstasy for the potential rave but let's go. My friend Stealtho Robbo is in the server too and our first objective is to simply find each other. Honestly, I have more chance of finding my father in real life than finding Robbo in this game. The map is huge and the spawns are random but by god we're going to die trying. Literally and probably many times. I find myself sneaking through houses trying to find useful items. I find some Christmas lights so now all I need is a quaint suburban house to put them on. I might put these lights up early too in September like one of those eager yuppies who decorates their house prematurely because their pathetic little lives have no meaning. Wow, that was a little grinchy. I notice these icons are indicating that I'm getting thirsty and hungry. Well, at least I think that's what they mean. I probably should have completed the tutorial, but lesson one, never admit you were wrong. I'm not having too much success finding anything at all and I'm starting to get dangerously dehydrated too, which is indisputably one of the most upsetting things that can happen to a person. On top of this, some infected maid is trying to eat me out and not in the kinky reality king's way. I mean she's genuinely trying to crack some sea salt on my head and chow down a la carte. I try to run, but quickly realise this hoe must have taken track and field quite seriously at high school and I'm forced to fist fight her. So here I am, bare knuckle boxing this deranged lass, all the while getting thirstier by the second. Anyway, for Stealtho Robbo and I to find each other, we'll need to locate actual street signs and then correspond our locations to the map of DayZ we looked up on Google on our computers in real life. I actually think it would be easier to orienteer ourselves blindfolded through the goddamn Himalayas. To make things even spicier, all the street signs are in Russian and the Russians don't even use letters. The wannabe Soviet ancient Egyptians use hieroglyphics, the edgelords. I'm also failing to properly feed myself, stay warm or stay hydrated meaning I'm on the brink of death so I decide to jump off a cliff and end things in a more empowering way. When committing suicide becomes empowering, you know you should have definitely watched the tutorial. For the first time in my entire life, I'll admit I was wrong. When you die in this game, you start completely from scratch, losing everything, it's crazy. So I respawn and get back to trying to find my mate. I tell him I'm in the pleasant little town of H and Coho and we make a plan to meet halfway. I start making my way towards him and nightfall sweeps over. By the way, night in this game is like actual night in real life, you can barely see anything at all. It's darker than my sense of humour. I'll increase the brightness a bit for your viewing pleasure 
pleasure, but seriously, half of Australia is on fire right now, and I reckon you'd have a higher chance of survival dousing yourself in petrol and running through the bush than playing this game. I travel for the entire night and am forced to drink murky water from a puddle to survive. I didn't have any water purifying tablets or a way to boil the water first, meaning I'll almost certainly catch a disease and eventually die unless I can find antibiotics. It really be that kind of game. In fact, Day Z is more brutal than becoming an Australian teacher in 1997, the same year corporal punishment was banned. Like imagine studying for years to become a teacher and then the year you graduate you're no longer allowed to hit kids. I can't imagine how disappointing that would be for those teachers who chose the career for that reason alone. Poor things. Anyway, after two hours of scavenging for cans of food, fighting zombies and crying frequently in real life, I finally find my boy Robbo. We're so happy as we can now start our second objective, making our way to the military base to get some high tier loot. Now in this state of euphoria, I failed to realise I was pissing out blood. You have to take into consideration, I had no idea what I was doing yet. I start asking Stealtho Robbo why my screen is losing its colour. In hindsight, this is a clever visual indicator to show low blood levels, but in the moment, I just thought my game was glitching out or something. It then goes full on black and white, and I proceed to bleed to death only minutes after finally rendezvousing with my friend. Wow, that's the definition of depression. This game is so ruthless and unique, especially for a console peasant, and so I don't know why I love it so much. I can't stress how much this game isn't for everyone though. I don't want to recommend it without a thick caveat cautioning that it is definitely not a gameplay experience that tickles everyone's fancy. Anyway, I spawned back in multiple times and found myself in some unique situations. Like here, where I was trapped in a train carriage without a weapon as three infected women tried to chew into my tenderloins. Why the hell do I always get the infected women after me, with herpes or otherwise? I also found another player, so I tried to befriend him. It went super well. Come in peace, don't shoot. Don't shoot, man. Don't shoot. What's up, man? Hey, yo, yo. Chill, chill, chill. I'm friendly, friendly. Yeah, so he punched me, and so I aimed a pistol at him. Unfortunately, I failed to realise I hadn't reloaded my gun properly, and so I pulled the trigger twice to no avail. His bullets worked fine though, and I was shot twice. All the loud shooting triggered a horde of zombies to come, and they mauled us both to death. It was here that I learned my most valuable lesson about DayZ. Almost every single person in this game is a dodgy mother. I met some other fresh spawns on the beach and we formed a gang. We figured we'd have a better chance of survival if we stuck together. I looted a house and heard a gunshot so went outside to investigate and realised the gang had already killed one of the members. This should be great for morale. Why did you kill that guy? This looks very, this looks very suspicious man. Hi, we killed this guy, we won't kill you. So I become part of this very unstable trio. I didn't trust them and they didn't trust me, but I figured it was worth taking a chance on humanity. We reached a police station where some kind of massacre had just gone down and like vultures, we swooped in and took what we could. The trust between the trio began to unexpectedly grow as we took refuge in the police station. My game glitched out and I couldn't drink water and I swear to God, the beautiful bastards started pouring fresh H2O directly into my mouth for me. They sure know how to win a pelican's loyalty. One of the surviving people from the first slaughter came back to kill us, but we'd locked ourselves in the police station and just sort of hid in here. Every now and then a new player would come by and ask us to come in, but we'd just watch on as zombies mauled them to death. This might seem cruel, but when you actually get established in this game, you have to be so careful with who you choose to trust, as if they backstab you, which they probably will, you're going to respawn back on the beach with a mother plum in your pocket and your dick in your hand. Or you know, my avatar's a female, so whatever the girl version of that expression is. Nipple in your mouth, I guess. I say farewell to my friends, as I made the dumb decision to drink water from a puddle again earlier, and now I've caught some disease and need to get antibiotics. I head off to find a hospital, but fail to reach it in time, and die in a forest. Sick one. Robbo and I eventually meet up again, somehow finding each other in the dead of night. 
You're just looking at a black screen right now, so I'll go ahead and fast forward to morning. The plan is of course to travel all the way to the military base and hopefully get some top tier loot. By this point we've got our heads around the basic mechanics and are pretty good at surviving. I take back what I said about skipping the tutorial, who needs that when you can simply spend 6 hours repetitively dying in a variety of different and special ways. Robbo actually died once because the soles of his shoes broke and he kept cutting his feet. I'm pretty sure that wouldn't actually kill you, so I guess this game is a officially more realistic than real life. See this can of peaches? If I want to get into this, I need a can opener or a knife. I then have to move the peaches into my hands. Then I have to actually physically open the can by combining my knife with said can. And then finally, I can eat the bloody peaches. It's like, am I enjoying tinned fruit or am I cracking the Da Vinci Code? Robbo and I are doing well though, making good time across this 144 km squared map. You heard me right. We stick to forests and try to stay off roads to avoid being attacked, as if we died now, I'd turn off my Xbox, go outside, find a cliff and jump off it for real. We reach the quaint little settlement of Bibuiho, I'm learning all Russian cities have the word ho in them, and I notice a zombie madly chasing after someone. It's another player. Now as you've seen, I've surprisingly met some pretty friendly players, so naturally I try to be welcome to this random guy. Robbo on the other hand has only come across hostile people in his time and trusted no one. So as I tried to make peace with the lad, this happened. Hey chill, 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 chill. chill, chill. We're friendly, we're friendly, we're friendly, we're friendly. We're friendly dude. I, sh I shot him down, I shot him down, I shot the guy, I killed the man. You killed- you killed the man? He was running with a knife. A slight miscommunication, but what's done is done, and he had some tasty loot. So I guess thanks for playing, big girl. I hope you enjoy your holiday to the beach. As we now have plenty of fresh water and food, we are able to sprint around without worrying about dehydration or starvation, and we begin to cover distance fast. We see some wild sheep, and it's so encouraging for us to see a peaceful life form in this cruel, bleak world. We proceed to kill the sheep, and we don't even have the means to cook the meat, so I guess we are just deranged. Maybe we're the zombies. Maybe this game is just a metaphor for life, and how we the people have all become zombies in this bureaucratic system where the richest 1% control society. I guess all we can do is try and become part of that 1% because power tripping seems like good clean fun. I start chopping trees down for no reason as DayZ suddenly turns into Minecraft out of absolutely nowhere. Thanks Russia, very cool. Finally though, we reach the military base where hopefully we can find some loot and hopefully not some highly geared angry players. I can't describe to you how good the feeling of reaching here was. I guess it's because every moment in this game is so tense. Seemingly simple events like crossing a field or finding an apple tree become so significant because it can be the difference between life and death. As far as I can tell, the aim of the game is just to survive in this post-apocalyptic wasteland for as long as you can. We ended up fighting our way through hordes of military undead and gearing up significantly. Or at least we looked incredibly geared up and had great combat jackets and helmets, but our actual guns were absolutely trash. I was rocking a single shot hunting rifle, so as long as only one player came at me, and they didn't move around very much, I'd be sweet. We did hear another player shooting zombies, but they hid from us and we were never able to track them down, which would have been the perfect end to this video, but yeah. Like I said, we couldn't find them, so rest in peace, perfect end to the video. Just reaching here was such a satisfying achievement though, and I mean look at me now. I look like I torment the devil while he sleeps. I better end the video, as this was like 10 hours or more of compressed gameplay, but if you'd like to see a DayZ part 2, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching and a massive thanks to those who support the channel on Patreon. Until next time, and as always, stay classy.